We'll be painting this awesome black Templar using a simple sponge alongside some manual brushing. My original intention was to actually paint this version of black, but any time I try to paint, things just go very wrong, which is mainly due to the fact that I tend to improvise a lot when I paint. It's not a style that works well when you're painting black, as any tiny mistake can just easily ruin the color. The main difference from the black armor I was going to paint originally is the fact that I went a much higher in highlights going all the way to almost pure white and then using a black wash to essentially dull it down and filter it through killing some of the brightness but at the same time giving a much more smoother transition between the colors it's one of those things you got to consider when painting fast do you want to have a different color palette or would you prefer just having much faster workflow and by keeping the same colors between black templars between shoulder pads and armor by working up to the whites you're essentially having a much quicker time without having to switch to a different color without having to mix in different colors it's a much more quicker workflow starting off with some AK rubber black. For the sponge, I usually just dip it in water once and then rinse it with my fingers. That makes sure the sponge is wet enough and it has plenty of moisture for the paint. I then mixed in some of the white, uh, realized I mixed in a bit too much and added some rubber black back into it. I'm still using the exact same sponge from previously and not adding any more moisture to it, applying a nice even layer throughout the model. Throughout painting the model, I keep the same sponge, only swapping it later on as I'm allowing the paint to mix in the sponge as well as on the wet palette. Mixing in some more white to the mix. I'm trying to use more of the edge of the sponge to apply much more cleaner transitions between the lines, and I'm also trying my best to grab as much of the shoulder as possible. Since slapping on white by itself is usually quite difficult in a shoulder pad, by beginning to transition from the black to the white, I'm having a much easier time building up the color I want. One of the things I also really enjoy is constantly rotating the model, making it easier for myself to access all the areas, and I also have an easier time seeing where is the pain going on the way I want it to, and where am I making slight mistakes that I can adjust and fix later on. Continuously adding more and more white to the palette, and slowly mixing it and going up in color. As I'm working with a sponge, it is slowly getting more dry, which is actually a good thing. Since I'm building up my highlights, I want them to be much sharper and cleaner rather than the much smoother transitions from before. I'd say having a wet palette is an incredibly important step as it helps to make sure you have the exact same paint consistency throughout the entire paint process. So even though the sponge is getting dry, the paint on the wet palette stays exactly the same. When I first started painting, that was one of the most difficult things to master as I constantly battled the fact that the paint would be drying up and I would be trying to add more water to it and never getting the consistency right, leaving the awful sponge texture behind. I worked in quite a large area as I still knew the fact that I'd be applying the wash which would be smoothing out the paint, so the larger the transitions are between the colors, the smoother it'll look once the wash is finally applied, adding in some more of the white to the mix. At this point, I'm just trying to slap it as quick as I can and just grab as much of the shoulder as possible. Continuously adding more white and then going up in brightness. If you start applying the paint and you feel like it's going on a little bit too bright, just add a little bit more of the rubber black and then continue adjusting it to your needs. Always keep in mind the fact that wet paint will look brighter and more saturated than dry paint. This even applies to white. White will always look very, very bright as it's still wet. The moment it starts drying up, you'll see that it's getting more and more dull and more and more transparent. So you can determine whether the fact that did you go too far or did you actually not go far enough and you need to mix in a bit more. Also, when painting black, I find that the best way to sell the effect that is technically black, uh, even though you're highlighting with a very bright color, in this case, it's literally white, is to place your highlight right where you'll be emitting the dark area. So this way you are having a much cleaner, much more visible area where the edge of the model is. Since once we apply the wash, we'll be dulling it down quite a bit and we'll have a harder time telling where exactly the highlights were placed. This is definitely one of the worst parts of playing Black Templar is having to paint the white shoulders as building up to white is just such a tedious experience. Uh, it's the main reason when I paint Black Templars, I tend to just cheat a little bit and go with quite often the red and black shoulders saying that it's a veteran or it's an elite unit. It is just an awful experience. Uh, white can be fine if you find a really good paint. Uh, for example, I'm using AK's white. Uh, I also really enjoy Liquitex white as they go in quite smoothly, but as a result, the trade-off is they're very thin 
but you don't have to worry about the chalkiness that you can find with other white paints. Here I start to create my wash by using Pro Acryls Transparent Black and some Liquitex Black ink, adding in a lot of flow improver. Uh, this is technically not a wash, it's more of a tint slash wash, as I really want my armor to be tinted black, as I really worked up quite a lot of highlights. By doing this effect, I'm also creating smoother transitions between the highlights we previously did, as two to three layers that we essentially created will be turning into one, but you'll still see naturally that there is a smooth transition between them. Then it took some warm gray and makes it into the rubber black we were using previously. This will be the shadow for both the loincloth and the scrolls. Technically speaking, if you were working on a much larger model, you could skip this step entirely and just use the warm gray by itself and then highlight it with a little bit of warm gray mixed with white. But at this point, I just knew that I wanted to work some extra details onto this model. So I decided to focus a lot on the scrolls, the face, and the weapon effect that I'll be getting on later. Also, I meant to say much larger squad, not a single model. Which looking back on the black, I definitely could have compressed the entire process into much fewer steps. But as I said, my process of painting usually is not something that I go in with a specific plan. I improvise to the best of my abilities, in which case this was getting into very bright highlights with white and trying to create a smooth transition between them. On the loincloth, I'm essentially working up to pure warm gray by itself, and then I'll be adding on a little bit of white to the mix to create a much more brighter highlight. I'm also using horizontal lines on both the scrolls and the loincloth. This helps create a more natural looking texture that you would expect from a cloth especially. I'm also trying to make sure I don't paint over the shadows I've already created, as they will help the cell effect that the cloth is bending rather than just a single strip of plastic. By this point, my tint wash was fully dry and it was no longer as glossy and I was able to see that I killed my highlights a little bit too much. So I wanted to go back and do a little bit of edge highlighting that would help sell the effect much more naturally. Focusing mainly on the areas that will catch the most light and create the smoothest transition. Then grabbing some deep red and mixing it in with rubber and black uh, to create the shadows for our seals. The main reason I'm also constantly going back to rubber black rather than black itself is I just had it next to me and it's dark enough to create the shadowy effect that I want without having to just reach out and just grab an extra paint. Uh, you couldn't technically use the wash we have on the palette as it has a lot of flow improvers so it would make the paint very watery and very difficult to use. And then I just worked my way up to painting pure deep red to have a nice bright saturated red. For the leather, I took some deep brown and once again, mixed it with the rubber black that I had previously. I can't say I ever use deep brown by itself as it's extremely saturated and it's just, it doesn't have the leather effect that I prefer. So here I mixed in some of the warm gray to highlight the color, but also desaturate it a little bit. So it has a much more natural leather look that you expect from leather. Moving on to the most dreaded part of the entire model painting black on the white shoulder pad. This was genuinely horrifying as I knew any single mistake I would make would result in just a very, very long process of having to repaint the white. My best advice with these shoulder pads would be just use a transfer, honestly. It's just so much quicker. If you're painting a large amount of models, a transfer will be quicker. You don't have to worry about accidentally painting over your white and then having to fix it. It's quicker, it's simpler, it's easier. However, I really enjoy that look, so I just try to be as careful as possible and do the best job I could to not get into the white. For the face, I mixed some Bugman's Glow into the rubber black, following the exact same theme we've been doing along the entire time. I really wanted to try with a face, as I usually do a really lazy job with a face, simply painting it in two layers. And having a good face on the model does help sell the effect of the rest of the model much more. And then for the highlight, I just continued mixing in a little bit more of Bugman Glow into it. It looks very bright right now, but once the paint dries up, it's actually much more darker. For the highlights, I focused on painting the cheekbones, the nose, the temple, the, actually the sides of the temple, the brow area, and then the top of the head. Here I'm mixing some warm gray into the mix as I didn't want the true saturation of Bugman's Glow as I find it a bit too cartoonish at times. 
so I wanted to have a much more natural skin effect. I continue doing the exact same effect I often do when highlighting, which is creating horizontal lines, which look a lot more natural than having a straight line as it has a much more interesting texture around it. And from far away, it helps sell the effect. Continuously mixing in more warm gray. And then just adding a tiny amount of Bugman's Glow as the color was getting a little bit too desaturated. And I continued to work on the exact same pattern of following the cheekbones, the nose, the unibrow, and the top of the head. Every single time I had to mix in a little bit more of the warm gray as, as the paint would dry up I'd realize that it's not highlighted enough so I kept pushing the highlights further and further and further and further. The constant process of just having to add more warm gray and create this transition in the face did result in the fact that I think I genuinely spent more time painting the face than I did the black armor. But honestly, the final result was just so fantastic, I have no regrets about it. I did my best to ignore the cross, um, I'm not sure, it's definitely not a tattoo, it's more like a burn mark. I did my best to ignore that area, but I wasn't too worried about if I got paint onto it, as I will be using a wash on it. Here I used some of the deep red to paint the eyes. My battery unfortunately died when I was recording it, but I did also apply a tiny bit of black wash to the eyes that I then painted the red over. Then I diluted some of the black paint and started applying the text in the scrolls. Then using gunmetal on the weapons and just applying it all over them. Uh, I used a very thin variation of the gunmetal paint from Vallejo Meadow Color as I wanted to create a transition to the bright metallic paint which I will then be adding a little bit of chrome to just to make it pop even further. Here I mixed in some of the chrome and applied a little bit of the highlights to the weapon, the tiny little area that's holding the cartridge, and also the sword. Here I'm using my gold mixture that I have a short on if anyone's interested. It's essentially Vallejo Metal Color Gold mixed in with green Stuff World pigment and mixed together. Painting the chest Aquila, uh, I think that's what it's called, the little trinket on the belt, as well as the sword. I considered painting the weapon red as it's supposed to be, but I decided against it as I really enjoyed the metallic look of it. Then I also took the wash that I used previously once I painted all the golds and applied it to the weapon, the chest, and the little trinket, creating more of a shadow and more depth to the gold. Then I realized my shoulders were not bright enough, so I grabbed some pure white and just continued applying more and more layers to the shoulder pads. And then applying a tiny little bit of highlights to the loincloth. As by this point, I just really enjoyed the model so much that I decided to add a few extra details to just make it pop more. As this white paint is very smooth, but like I said, quite transparent, I, I did have to apply quite a few layers of it, but in the end, it was definitely worth it. Also, applying a very thin glaze to some of the parts of the armor to have a much more contrasty effect. As I realized, I've applied by this point so much white to the shoulder pads and the loincloth, I needed a bit more contrast to the rest of the model. Then I also realized I did not paint my shoulder pads after I applied black to them, so I went back for the exact same mid-color I was using previously, ignoring all the previous steps I did. In the end, this part actually made me understand that I probably could have just genuinely painted black much quicker if I just went from this color to the much brighter whites. And then just using a much thinner version of the wash I did, applying a lot more flow improver uh, to make it much thinner. When painting the shoulder pads, I decided to work in a much more streakier pattern to have an effect of battle damage, sort of like the paint is getting chipped off and slowly revealing the much brighter area underneath it. For the energy effect, I decided to use AK Blue Green, applying a thin version of it to the plasma gun as well as the sword. For the sword, I painted a small lightning pattern just to simulate sort of like the energy flowing through the sword. I wasn't particularly careful and the lines were just quite thick, which will actually help with the next step, as I'll be adding white to the blue green to create a highlight and trying to paint that in between the thick layer I currently painted. I thought it would also be pretty cool to have the energy coming out from the actual sword handle rather than that tiny little uh, cable tube that's usually associated with the energy. Then I mixed in a bit more white and continued applying it over the exact same area that I just did. I went straight into much more of a pure white as I realized trying to do a much more smoother transition was just pointless. <laughs> 
using the exact same color on the plasma weapon, but working a lot more wet to have a natural capillary effect, as I want the paint to climb up the coil of the weapon, adding in more and more white to have a brighter color. At this point, I didn't record the wet palette as all I was doing was just simply adding a tiny bit of white to the blue-green. This step should have been much quicker, but I had the exact same issue as before where I was applying the white, I thought the paint was bright enough, but as it was drying up, it clearly wasn't bright enough, so I just kept going back for more and more white, trying to bring back some of the brightness. And here I applied essentially the wash from previously to the areas where the chains were, and as well as the weapons. By painting the weapons much darker, we also have a much easier time selling the effect of the weapon being energy and glowing. And then going back with just pure white for the energy weapons to provide essentially the source of the light. Once again, I got a bit greedy, so I went back for some of the flesh tone and added a bit of white into it to provide even a larger highlight. This time going in a much thinner line from the single cheekbone to the nose to the top of the head. And we were done. For the base, I did apply just a basic earth texture that I usually use, and then using some old rust pigment from Vallejo as a dust effect. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.